we are going to have lecture number two. We are going to talk about the force vectors and also we are going to talk about the vector operations. So today we are going to, to talk how to multiply and divide the vectors, how to add the vectors, how to subtract the vectors, how to decompose or resolve the vector. Also we'll talk about the vectors uh, addition of forces and we'll talk about how to uh, analyze the uh, problem. So if you can see here, here I have a hook and it's connected with three chains here and here and here. And uh, in order to know the resultant forces acting on that hook, I need to uh, calculate the uh, forces, the summation of the forces acting on that hook to know whether that hook is going to break or bend. And chain number one, chain number two, <coughs> and chain number three represent three forces. So we have three forces acting on that hook. And I need to know the resultant forces so that I will be able to design uh, the, the hook or to be able to know whether the hook is going to, to fail or not. Uh, in order to do this, we need to understand how to deal with the uh, vectors. Okay. So, like I said, we are going to talk about the vectors operation. First, we'll start about how to add vectors. If I have many vectors like this one, how I'm going, how I'm going to add them in order to get the result. We have two rules in order to do that. The first one is parallelogram law. The second one is a triangle law. The triangle law, you can say it's a special uh, case of parallelogram law. So we are going to start with the parallelogram law. So assume we have a vector A. So this one is a vector A, and here is a vector B. We need to calculate the resultant for them. So in order to apply the parallelogram law, we have uh, some steps need to be done. First, I need to connect the vectors at, the, at their tails. So the tail of vector A, I need to connect it with the tail of vector B, like this one. So here is the first step. The second step, I'm going to draw a line which is parallel to the vector A. So at the head of vector B, I'm going to draw uh, a line which is parallel to vector A. I'm going to do the same thing at vector A. I'm going to draw a line which is parallel to vector B. Then I'm going to draw a line from the tails of the vectors to the head of the vectors. That line, it will represent the resultant force. And this is the parallelogram law. So, like you can see here, I have vector A and vector B. If I uh, apply the rules of the parallelogram law, I will be able to know the result. And in that case, the vector R is a summation of vector A plus vector B. Also, the, 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 the second type, which is a tri triangle rule, in that case, I have vector A and I have vector B. In this case, I'm going to take the tail of the vector B and put it at the head of the vector A. So I have vector A, I'm going to take vector B and connect them. I'm going to connect the tail of vector B to the head of vector A. And then I'm going to draw a line from the tail of vector A to the head of vector B. And this one is the resultant. So you can use a triangle rule or you can use the parallelogram uh, law. So again, in, paragra in parallelogram law, I have vector A, vector B. I'm going to connect them at their tails. 
then I'm going to draw a line which is parallel to vector A, a line which is uh, parallel to vector B. Then I'm going to connect them, to connect a line from their tails to their heads. And this represents the result. Or you can use the <coughs> triangle rule. I have vector A, and I have vector B. I'm going to take vector A. I'm going to connect the uh, tail of vector A with the head of vector B. And then I'm going to draw a line from the tail of vector A to the head of vector B. And this one represents the resultant. So again, the triangle rule, it will give you the same result, R equal A plus B. Uh, any question so far? Any question so, so far? Is it clear for you how to apply the triangle rule and the parallelogram? Lou? Uh, what the difference between uh, them? No difference, just dif different uh, method. It will give you okay. the same conclusion. You can use which the easiest one for you. But I'm going to use the, both of them in order to make the uh, uh, addition. Okay? Also, you can subtract the vectors. So if you have vector A and you have vector B, if you want to sub subtract vector A from vector vector B from vector A, if this one is a minus, then the only thing that it will change is the di direction. So this one is vector B. If vector B is minus, then you can you will only change the direction. And then you are going to apply the parallelogram law and the triangle law. So if you want to say the resultant is equal A minus B, instead of minus, you can write plus and then open the bracket and put the minus. It's the same thing. But we, we have done this in order to uh, show how to subtract the vectors. So if I'm going to subtract the any vector, I'm going to change the direction of that vector. And then I'm going to apply the parallelogram law again. So now it's a normal problem. I'm going to connect them from their tails, the tail of vector A and vector B, like this one. I'm going to apply the law. I'm going to draw parallel line here and parallel line there. And I'm going to draw the result. Or you can also use the triangle rule. I'm going to put uh, vector A, and then I'm going to put the uh, vector B here at the head of vector A, and then I'm going to draw the resultant. So you are going to get the same thing. In that case here, you could say the resultant equal A minus So now also we need to know how to, how to resolve a force. So if the line of action are known, if you know the line of actions, the resultant can be resolved into two components acting along those lines. For example, if you know the resultant and you have a line of action, here I have line of action here, and I have la line of action. It could be X, Y, it could be any letters. Yeah, we are going to say we have random axis or random ax <coughs> line of actions. Yeah, I'm going to have V and I'm going to have U. If I know the resultant, I can decompose or resolve the uh, force into uh, that line and into that line. So, if I have the resultant, I can decompose the force into F, V, and F, U. So, also I can draw it like that. You can take that part here, or you can take that part there. So, still we are talking about the addition of the forces. We have two common types or problems that we are going to face here in static. Either to find the resultant, and in that case, you should get the components, or you are going to have 
the resultant or the force and you need to resolve the force into its component okay so we are going to have two types of problems either to give you the uh, resultant and to get the components or you are you have the components and you need to calculate the resultant so uh, if we have case like this one in that case I have more than one vector here remember we use the parallelogram law in order to uh, calculate the resultant of two forces but sometimes it's required to calculate the uh, resultant for for more than two forces so here in this case I have f2 and I have f1 and I have f3 and it's required to calculate the resultant for the three forces so I have three forces and it's required to calculate the resultant if it was two forces directly I'm going to apply either the triangle rule or the parallelogram law but if I have three cases in that case I'm going to uh, solve the problems in two steps first I'm going to apply the parallelogram law for F1 and F2 so here I have F1 and I, and I have F2 I'm going to connect them together and I'm going to construct parallelogram for a line here for a line there and here is the resultant but this is going to be the resultant <laughs> for F1 and F2 so this is step number one so as a result instead of having three forces I'm going to have only two forces instead of F1 and F2 now I have only one vector represent F1 plus F2 and now I can again uh, do step number two by uh, add that vector with that vector again I'm going to construct the parallelogram by drawing parallel lines and connect them and this one represent the resultant so even if I have more than two forces I will be able to calculate the resultant also it's very important to recall the sine and the cosine law now in order to solve any problems here first we need to understand how to apply the parallelogram law or the triangle law then we are going we are going to apply the sine and the cosine laws we're going to apply the sine or the cosine laws so if you don't remember or, or if you don't recall the sine or the cosine law we are going to explain it here we are going to use them in case you have triangle and we will assume a represent the length of that uh, part here and C represent the length of that part here and B represent the length of that part here while C here we have capital C and here we have small c we made it like that because uh, the angle here is opposite to that part to that length here and this one is a small b because the angle is opposite to b here and we call this one small a because the angle here is opposite to that length a here that is why we call it A capital and A small, C capital and C small, B capital and B small. So first we'll start with the cosine law. So in order to use a cosine law, I need to know at least uh, the length of two parts. I need to know the length of that part and the length of that part and also I need to know the angle which is opposite to the required length so if I know a and I know B and I know the angle C 
I will be able to calculate the length C by applying that formula. In that case, we will say C it will equal square root of A square plus B square minus A uh, minus 2 multiplied by A times B times cosine C, where C is the angle which is opposite to C. Also, if I know B and I know C and I know A, I will be able to calculate, uh, if I know the angle A is small, I will be able to calculate the length A capital. The same thing could be applied for B. If I know A and I know C and I know B, I will be able to calculate uh, B capital. Is that point clear for you? Any, any question regarding the cosine law? Please, do you have any question regarding the cosine law, how to apply the cosine law? Okay, I'm going to, do you have question? No. Okay, uh, also I'm going to explain the sine law. The sine law, if you are going, for example, if you know A and you know A is small, okay, and also you know B, or let's say you know B is small, and you need to calculate B. In that case, the, the sine law, it says that the proportion between the length and the opposite angle it's equal for all the other parts. It means that the proportion between B to the sine of the uh, angle which is opposite to B equal uh, A over sine A is small, where A is small is the angle which is opposite to the length A, and also it's equal to C, the length C, over the sine of the opposite angle which is C small, and that is the sine law. So, for example, if I know A, and I know A, A is small, and I know B is small, I will be able to calculate B. Also, if I know A capital, and I know A is small, and I know C is small, in that case, I will be able to calculate the I know you have uh, studied this before, but here I'm going to remind remind you with the tools that help us to uh, solve the problem. So now, in order to solve the problems, first I need to apply either the parallelogram law or the triangle law. And then I'm going to use the trigonometry by using the sine or the cosine law. And let us solve the example so that we can uh, apply all the uh, rules together to see how it's going to work. So please focus here. We have example one. And we have screw eye like this one or like a hook. And it's subjected to two forces. I have F1 and I have F2. And the angle with the x-axis, positive x-axis, it's given here. And the angle with the positive y-axis, it's given here. The angle here is 15 degree and the angle here is 10 degree. It's required to determine the magnitude of the resultant force. So I have F1 and I have F2. I need to calculate the resultant on that screw I. And also, <coughs> it's required to calculate the direction of the resultant force. After you calculate the resultant force, it's required to calculate the direction with the positive x-axis. So in order to solve a problem like that, I need to uh, draw the x-axis and the y-axis. And I have here, I have F2, and this one is the F1. It's required to calculate the FR. So FR is 
what we want uh, number one here and the angle here with the x-axis it's what we want in number two so I need to know the FR and I need to know the direction of the resultant force like I said I need to draw the x-axis and the y-axis then I need to put F1 the value of F1 is equal 100 Newton so here is F1 then I need to put F2 which is equal 150 Newton then in order to calculate the resultant first step I need to apply the parallelogram law so in order to apply the parallelogram law for, uh, first I will be able to know this angle right how I'm going to know that angle here it's given it's given that the angle here is 50 and the angle here is 10 and we know that since since this one is the x-axis and that is the y-axis that means the angle here is equal 90 degree so if the angle from here to here is 90 degree and this one is 10 and this one is 15 I will be able to calculate the angle here so the angle here it will equal 90 minus 10 minus 15 and that it will be 65 then I'm going to apply the parallelogram law I'm going to go here and draw parallel line to F2 and I'm going to go here and draw a parallel line to F1 and then I'm going to uh, put the uh, resultant from here to here so this one represent the resultant and in order to calculate FR I need to know at least that angle here so my purpose now is to know that angle because if I know that angle here I will be able to apply the cosine law so if this one is 65 and we are dealing with parallelogram and if you have parallelogram it's mean that all the opposite angles are equal so this angle is opposite to that angle if this one 65 that means this angle also is 65 now I need to know the angle here and the angle here if this angle is X that means this angle here also is going to equal X as well because the angle here and the angle here since they are opposite it means they are equal so the angle here should equal the angle there and I know the uh, summation of the internal angles for this is going to equal 360 so I'm going to say that 65 here plus 65 here plus X here plus X here is going to equal 360 and of course if I have that formula I will be able to solve for X so if I have formula like this the value of X is going to equal 115 so here the angle is going to equal 115 so now I can take this part alone and I'm going to say this angle is 150 also you can take that part here because now this one is triangle I know F1 it's given I know F2 it's given also and I know the internal angle which I calculated from here now I finish with the the parallelogram part I need now to apply either the cosine or the sine law and if you take yourself a time to think about that problem you will conclude that it's better to use the cosine law so remember here is the cosine law now I don't know that that part but I know this and I know that and I know the angle here which is opposite to that uh, part so in that case I'm going to apply that formula the value of C here is going to represent FR 
and the value of a is going to re be represented by f1 and the value of b is going to be represented by f2 and the value of a f1 value of b f2 and c here which is opposite angle is going to be represented by 115 degree so i need to put, put all these numbers in the formula substitute like this one this one 100 is from here, this one 150, 100, 150, and here is 115 degree, which is the opposite angle to FR. And if you calculate that value, the, 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 yeah, the FR is going to equal 213 Newton. And remember, now we just, <coughs> we, we've, we found the uh, required number one, which is FR. I need to also to find the direction of the resultant force, which is that angle here. So now I need to calculate the angle here. In order to do that, I need to apply the sine law. I already know FR. I already know F1. I know F2. And I know that angle. I need to calculate this, this angle here. So in order to calculate that angle, I cannot do it directly. First, I need to calculate the angle here, which is here. And then I will add that angle to that angle here, which is 15, in order to calculate the direction of the resultant force. So now, what should I do? I need that angle here. And the opposite, the opposite to that, the length with, which is opposite to that angle is F2, that part here. So I'm going to say that 115 over the uh, sine of that unknown angle is going to equal FR over the sine of 115. So by doing this, I will be able to calculate the angle here because I use the sine law. So I will say that 115, which is the length of that part, over the sine of the angle, I'm going to call this theta, is going to equal the resultant, which is FR over the sine of the opposite angle, which is 115. And if you solve that problem here, the value of theta is going to equal uh, 39.8 degree. But did we solve the problem? No, we didn't solve the problem. We only calculate the angle here. We need to calculate the angle from here to here. So in order to do that, I'm going to add the angle theta plus 15 degree. So the final answer, which is phi, we are going to call that uh, angle phi. So phi is going to equal uh, 39.8 degree plus 15 degree. And the answer came out to be 55.8 degree. So problem like that you need to write only the, the problem, cover the solution. First, try to draw the uh, parallelogram, uh, construct the parallelogram, and apply the parallelogram law. And you need to know what's, what, it, what is required. We need to, to know the value of FR, and we need to know the angle uh, phi. And then learn to how to construct this until you uh, come up with the triangle and also you need to learn how to use the cosine law and you need to learn how to use the sine law uh, i recommend to it's recommended to solve this problem by yourself and correct yourself uh, whenever you find any mistake okay here we have other type of problems this time, we already have the resultant. And we need to know the components into U axis, into that line, and into V 
axis into that line. So now we already have the resultant and we need to calculate the components. And it's the second type of the problems. So the question says, dissolve or decompose the horizontal force 600 pound in the figure here. So here we have resultant force equals 600 pound. And it's required to uh, resolve that forces into components acting along the U and V axis. So I have the U axis and the V axis. And determine the magnitudes of these components. So we need to decompose or resolve that uh, force into U axis and V axis. And also we need to know the components. So again, first I'm going to draw the axis here. I have the V axis. And also I have the uh, U axis, which is here. So I have a U and I have V. And they give me FR already. Last time we have the components and we need the resultant. This time we know the resultant and we need to calculate the components. The components which is FU and FV. So again in order to solve this I need to construct the parallelogram. Again. So in order to construct the parallelogram I need to draw a line here which is parallel to that line V. And I need to draw another line which is parallel to U to construct the parallelogram. Now, I need to know the internal angle here. So it's given that the angle here is 30, 30 degree. And the angle here is also 30 degree. And since this one is a straight line, it means that the angle from here to here is going to equal 180 degree. So summation from here to here equal 180 degree. And this one is 30 and this one is 30. Which means that I will be able to calculate this angle. So this angle here is going to equal 180 minus 30 minus 30. And this one is going to be 120. So I know that angle and I know that angle. I will be able to calculate this one. So this one is should equal 120. So this angle here is 120. This angle here is 30. This one here is also 30. And the summation of that angle here is going to equal that one, since they are opposite to each other. But this time, the problem is uh, 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 more simple than the uh, example number one. Because we have a rule. If I have a line, and that line is intersected by two parallel lines. So I have a straight line here, and I have parallel line here, and another parallel line here. And we are going to say the angle here is going to equal the angle there. And the angle here is going to equal the angle here. So since I have parallel lines and I have a straight line, the angle here, and we already calculated this one, and it came out to be 120, is going to calculate the angle here, 180, 120 degree. So after, after I have done this, I can separate that triangle alone. Uh, this one is FU and this one is FV. And I already know that angle. And we already know this angle from the uh, old rule here. And if this one is 30 and this one is 120, and we know that summation of the angles for the triangular is 120, uh, which means that the angle here is going to equal 30 as well. So now I know all the internal angles and I know the value of the resultant, which is 600 pound. And it's required to calculate the FU and FV. So in order to do that, I need to put the sine and the cosine law in front of my eyes and think which one is going to solve my problem here. And if you take a time and think about it, you will find that you are going to use the sine law. 
because I know all the internal angles and I know the one one of the uh, side, one of the sides here. So in order to calculate, for example, if you, I'm going to say that if you over the sine of the opposite angle, which is 120, is going to equal uh, 600 over the uh, sine of the opposite angle, which is 30. And by using that formula here, like you can see here, if you over sine of the opposite angle, which is 120, is going to equal 600 over the opposite of the uh, this angle, which is 30. By solving this problem here, you will be able to calculate the FU. Then what about FV? How I'm going to solve FV? I'm going to <laughs> apply the same principle, but this time I'm going to say that FV over the opposite angle, which is 30, is going to equal 600 over the opposite angle, which is 30. So if you over the sine 30 is going to equal 600 over the sine 30. And we are going to calculate FV. So now you can see the problem is simple, but you need to understand what's going on. Okay. So again, it's strongly suggested that you test yourself on the solution to this example. Example number one and number two, it's very important and illustrate many concepts for you. So you have to cover the, the solution. Don't look at the solution. Just read the problem, then try to draw the parallelogram law. Then think about how the sine and the cosine law are used to determine the unknowns. Try to do it until you master the problems. That's my advice for you.